The component that we're going to be using for this lesson is the dual color LED. We're going to take a few minutes to review the dual color LED schematic and all of the components on the board. The first item that we'll look at on the dual color LED is the connector. So this connector has three pins. Those pins are identified by circles in our wiring diagram. The pins are part of that white connector and there will be wires that uh, move out of the connector and uh, are to the, from each corresponding pin. We can see that there are labels by each corresponding pin. Those labels match the uh, electrical schematic for the dual color LED. The first label that we're concerned about is the R. So we can see an R on the dual color LED board, and then we see an R on the schematic. The next component on the board is labeled R1. This is a resistor. The value of this resistor is measured in ohms. It is a 220 ohm resistor. The purpose of the resistor in the circuit is for current limiting. The current limiting is in place in order to protect the LED. The next component is our LED. This is a specific LED known as a dual color LED. It can emit both red and green based on which um, terminal, either the R terminal or the G terminal, has power. Before we get into the uniqueness of this particular LED, let's take a look at how an LED works. Pause the video here and watch the uh, video labeled, How Does an LED Work? You can find the URL for the video in this lesson. Hopefully the video helped you to figure out how an LED works. The main points that we need to take away from this are that an LED has an anode and a cathode. The anode is on the positive side and the cathode is on the negative side. Current will only flow in one direction of an LED. The direction is from the anode through the cathode. When an LED is connected in this way, it is known as forward bias. This forward bias allows the semiconductor device to convert electrical energy into light energy, and we have the LED illuminate. When we reverse the polarity and put the positive on the ground side, this is known as reversed biased. A reversed biased LED does not illuminate. There's no current flowing through this circuit because the LED is preventing current from flowing in that direction. Because no current is flowing, we cannot emit light from the LED. We saw the ground pin used in the previous example, but I wanted to make sure to point that out. The ground pin is the third pin down, the labeled GND. It's also labeled GND on the dual color LED schematic. An important part about the ground pin is both the R pin, which makes the LED turn red, and the G pin, which makes the LED turn green, are both connected to the same ground. The circuit labeled with the G uh, starts with the G pin, which is the center pin, and then it has a resistor, 220 ohm, the same as the R circuit, and it is labeled as R2. If we provide power to the G pin, the LED will illuminate green. Both the R and G circuits share the same ground. One other important note is that in the schematic, we're showing two separate LEDs. That's actually not the case. This dual color LED is one LED. The schematic separates them just to make it easier to understand. We're now going to connect our dual color LED to our breakout board, which will connect to the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. So remove the dual color LED and uh, place it on your board. We will also need a three pin wire. We now need to connect the dual color LED to the GPIO extension board. The connector just slides in place. It goes in only in one direction. The only wires that we want to worry about for now are the black wire and the yellow wire. 
the black wire goes to the ground pin of the LED and the yellow wire goes to the R pin of the dual color LED. If we look at the schematic and the GPIO extension board layout, we want to connect the ground pin, a black wire, to the ground at physical pin number 20. Now we could connect it at physical pin number 30 or physical pin number 34, but we're going to select uh, 20. So take the black wire and connect it to pin number physical pin number 20. The yellow wire coming from pin R on the dual color LED board will be connected to physical pin 12, which is GBIO 18. Looking back at our GPIO extension board, we should see that the black wire is connected to physical pin number 20, which is a ground, and our yellow wire is connected to GPIO 18, which is physical pin number 12. Our board is now set up to run our first program.